Charles. Matt, thank you very much. New calls for peaceful protests in the wake of violence and looting across this country this week. That's something my next guest's uncle and father preached during their civil rights marches back in the 1960s. Alveda King is Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece and the daughter of A.D. King. And Alveda is a good friend of mine and someone I'd love to uh, be able to speak to during these periods. Alveda, just overall, the, I, I don't know about you, but I've just been a ball of emotions. Uh, you know, sadness, anger, frustration, and some hopefulness. How are you feeling about all of this? Charles, hello. I have experienced all of those emotions yesterday, today even. The preacher at the memorial service said, in the name of George Floyd, take your knee off our necks. I say it this way, and you just mentioned my granddaddy was a preacher, daddy king, my daddy A.D. king, my uncle M.L. king. I'm an evangelist. In the name of Jesus, I call for justice. I call first for peace, for unity and justice and mercy. In the name of Jesus, stop the violence. Stop the violence. We can protest peacefully, Charles, and we must, but the violence will not We've got to do this with God. And you already know we've had this conversation. There's one human race. Skin color won't determine that. It's the blood of the human. We're one human race, and we must learn, Charles, to live together as brothers, as my uncle said, our added sisters, or perish together as fools. We cannot do that with violence. We've been through episodes like this before in the past, of course. And uh, often coming out of them, the commentators would say, maybe we're on the, on the track to something better. I believe yeah. this time we probably could be, because I look at the composition of people who are peacefully protesting. I look at the cities where some of these protests are occurring. And I think that there's a generation out there that wants to legitimately, sincerely make things better. How do they go about actually achieving that? Charles, you just used important you said people, you didn't break it into categories, skin color, age, male, female, any of that. You said people. So people talking, people really seeing each other. You can't be colorblind because you have to see color and everything else, but see me, hear me. And then when you hear me, we can communicate. So each person, you start with yourself, examine your own heart, and then talk to your family, your friends, your coworkers. Go, go back to church and get church on, social media at least and communicate as you communicate and communicate with your leaders the leaders we should be out among you i get out there and pray right out in the streets with you so do your part one on one one by one and then grow into a community of listeners of people who see and hear and listen and solve these problems together Alvita, you broke up a little bit there. Uh, I, I do want to ask, and I, and I hope your, your system is, is still up, but when we do look at, when we're introspective, when we're looking at ourselves, is there something specific we should do? And, and how, do we, how are we supposed to be honest with ourselves? Because it feels like if we, as a fractured nation, it begins with fractured people, and, and, and how do we find a way to heal ourselves? Charles, when I look in my mirror, I say, do, am I a racist? Do I see the black race only? Or do I see the human race? Do I see the human personality? From the womb to the tomb, from the George Floyds, the babies in the womb, the old, the sick, the elderly, the rich. Am I ready to fight people or am I ready to love people? I start with me. And when I see me, then I should look at you, Charles, and you, I should be reflected back in your eyes and you should be reflected back in my eyes. I see Jesus, by the way. You know, I'm a Christian evangelist. But start with yourself and people in your circle and begin to speak peace, begin to listen and give compassion and give love. That sounds real simple. It's not going to be the PPP check. It's not going to be the money. All that's good. We need help. But we as human beings are going to have to regard each other and love each other and help each other. And we can do this. All right. My great fear, and I think the only thing that can hurt what's, what's happening now, the good part that's coming out of this tragedy, are politicians and the media. Uh, when yeah. I toggle channels on the news and I watch what's being done and said and stoking of the flames and the finger pointing, 
it angers me to to such a degree. I'm so angry that people are hijacking this. Not not Antifa, not any other of these fringe elements. I'm talking about the media and politicians to make things worse because they think it enhances their own power. You know what, Charles? Be angry, that's good. And sin not, fear not. Instead of fear, use faith and use love. Be angry, but use your anger to heal. Anger can also do that. The same adrenaline that makes you scared and angry can also strengthen you. And so your words do have power. You have a platform admitting publicly, I'm angry too. I'll admit that with you. But Charles, what are we going to do? We're talking together. You've given me a platform today, and I'm appreciative. So use that anger for good. Anger for good does work, and you can do it peacefully. You can pray. You can march. You can vote. You can do all of that. Right. But it's got to for good. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I've got less than a minute to go. Uh, you know, uh, from 1968 to 78 to 88 to 98, things didn't really change much. Do you think we'll look back 10 years from now and we'll say things changed a whole lot? Things changed because Charles Payne and L.V. King admitted that we are angry, but we want to do good with it. So that's a change in and of itself, overcoming evil with good. It will get better. Yes, it will. God bless you, Alvita. I love speaking with you, and I think the audience loves you as well.